I did something really exciting last week, and that is to create this. This is a statue as a fully fledged 3D object here in Blender. We're looking at it, and it is something that actually came to life from photos. That is quite fascinating. So this is photogrammetry, a completely free process that could do with some more detail on the back here, but it's something that we can use for our project, which is really, really exciting. So the history here is that we wanted to use statues like this, objects like that, and we just didn't find them on the regular asset store. So I said to my boss, well, why don't we just go, if you have objects like that, why don't you take some pictures of it, send them over to me, and I'll see what I can do with photogrammetry. And he had his uh, colleague do that in a studio in Washington, sent some photos over to Florida, and this thing comes to life and we can use it in our project in Unreal Engine, which is just so, so cool. Let me show you how the process works, what photos we've used as source footage, and so that you can do the same thing with your objects. It doesn't cost you a cent, which is really, really cool. Let's get started. There are a great many photogrammetry apps on the market, but I'm going to use the one that comes basically for free with the Epic Launcher. If you head over to your Unreal Engine tab and then head over here to the Reality Capture tab, then you get to download the program. So it comes in two versions. Currently, at the time of recording this video, 1.51 is the latest one. And this is not something that Epic have written from scratch. They've bought this in. They bought a company and turned it into one of the many Epic offerings here. And it's completely free to use if you're an independent developer. I think if you make more than a million a year, I think you have to give Epic some money, but don't quote me on this for indies it's completely free and i've installed it already i'm going to go and launch it from here the pictures that we've taken i'll show you this in the program in a moment or should i show you this now i'll show you this now but there are about 70 of them i've copied them here to my desktop statue demo and let's just have a quick browse through them I have the extra large icons. This is what they look like. So there is a stand in the way and there is a bit of green screen, but it's not all green screen. So there's also some black footage and there's some objects in the background. It doesn't really matter as long as the program can decipher what is on here. And the best way to take these pictures is in fact, I'll go back to Blender and show you this here. I'll go and make a circle just as a, as a demo and I'll make the circle a little bit smaller and bring that a little higher. So if you're some distance away so that the whole object is being shown, so you, you can crop in, but uh, the, the best results you get if you have the full object um, photographed on every picture. So you start here and you just uh, point the camera towards the object and you go around the circle every 10 to 20 degrees, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, and then take like 10, 12, 20, doesn't matter how, there's no upper limit. You can, you can have more than that. But make sure that whenever you move, the object is framed up and you shift your perspective a little bit because that's what photogrammetry works with. And then you do the whole thing again from a little bit higher up let's say from here. And once again, follow the circle, go around and just keep taking pictures. And then once again, do the same thing from slightly lower down. So give it a lower perspective as well. Uh, it doesn't matter if you spin clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter if they're portrait or rectangular or square. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if it's different cameras, different focal lengths. It doesn't really matter. The program is going to be able to work all this out, which is quite fascinating. So you give it that, you give it these three circles, and then you also give it like a, like a loop from, from above here. So if you were to imagine that, like the upper circle, if you do, if you do this, go around and just take a few details from the top and also make sure you have no harsh shadows in there because otherwise that's going to be problematic. They'll be baked in to the texture. So diffuse lighting is good. Maybe an overcast day if you want to do it outside. Oh, and another thing, the object needs to be static. So if the object moves, so like if you scan a person, that's going to be problematic because the program isn't going to be able to work out uh, the best perspectives there. But once you've done that, and once you've made a series of pictures like this, like my colleague Nick did here, then we can go and bring them into Reality Capture. So the program looks, this is it by the way, this looks a little bit daunting, but it has a really nice help section built in and it uh, it wants to help you. First of all, there's many tabs and many confusing options here, so don't get, don't get bamboozled by that. If you go and have a look at this 
row here, this will select you a layout. So I think the help will actually tell you this. Go and select the three by three layout. So one plus one plus one is the second icon from the left here. If you select that, you essentially have three viewports. This one here, which is where we're going to go and import some images here. Then this one here, which is your 3D viewport. And this one's going to have settings or help in it. So um, that's something that you can always have. You can click Let's Get Started or Open Help, and then it'll, it'll talk you through this. 3D navigation is a little bit bizarre. I'll come to that in a moment. Let's bring in our source material. Could be pictures, could be drone footage, could be videos. Any of this works. I'm going to go and click on input here. So workflow and then plus inputs. And that's going to allow me to specify the source images. So mine are in statue demo on the desktop, statue pics. I'm going to go and say control A and add them in there. If you had multiple folders, you can repeat that process for the subsequent folders. You can also add folders directly. If you want to add a video, if you've taken a video footage of that, then you can just say this one here, video. And that's that's all there's to it. So now once all your images are in there, we need to tell the program, have a look at all of them and see if you can find an object in there. And that happens here on the alignment tab. So you click on that and then you say align images. So we were on the workflow tab, now we're on the alignment tab, and then we're going to click on align images, F6. Click on that. Takes a moment depending on how many images you have there. And this is going to make you something called a sparse point cloud. So that means it hasn't stitched the images together, but it'll show you something that where, where that object is going to be. Now, word of warning, it could happen that the program says, I haven't found anything, or I found 12 different things, and they're all not what you're expecting. In that case, it hasn't quite worked, and you need different images or more images. Sometimes I've tried it in sort of darker environments here at home, and that hasn't worked out. But the images that my, my colleagues set up there with two, three uh, soft boxes in the studio, that worked really well. Or outdoor captures, that works really well. There we go, finished in 56 seconds. So that wasn't, that wasn't bad at all. So about navigation, this is where you're going to be able to look at your point cloud. This is unlike anything that I've ever seen, but <laughs> so maybe you've maybe you've seen this model before. Control right click to move around. Uh, scroll the mouse wheel to go back and forth. And I believe scroll and the left mouse button to pan. So it's a little bit bizarre. I think it's similar to what iClone uses, but hey, it's one of those things. So we can quite clearly see we have sort of a bounding box here. That is the whole room that Reality Capture has detected here. And in it, it has detected one object, which is exactly what we're looking for. If we go closer, you can sort of see the outline of my object. You can also see that we could probably do with a bit more data from the back or probably more light from the back. But that's, you know, that's, that's fine. That's fine. It also shows you these little, it looks like, um, looks like little meteors around, uh, <laughs> around a planet here. These are, in fact, the camera positions that it detected and it used all these for that image. So that's quite cool. Every little dot represents a position where my colleague took a photo from, which is kind of cool. So we don't really need to tell it to go and turn the whole thing into a 3D object because you can also see there's a bit of noise down here. We don't really want to capture that. It also looks like it's not quite turned the right way. So we can go and shrink this bounding box to only encompass our image there. So this at the bottom here is the ground plane. So we can first of all set my object to the ground plane. And that's a little bit confusing because it's on the tools tab, but we have two tools tabs, which is bizarre. We've got the tools here, but we've also got the scene 3D tools. So it gets the second one that we need. So click on scene 3D tools, and then we have both the set reconstruction region and set the ground plane. So let's do that first. I believe what you do is you set ground plane, and then you can go and drag the model down until it is sort of on the ground plane here. And then you set that option again, like so. That makes it neater. So we don't really want to capture this, this white cube here. I want to kind of crop that out. I want to do this. And I also want to make sure I turn this around. So you can go while you're, while you're doing that, you can also turn this so that the object faces the correct way. Sometimes it gets recognized 90 degrees on an angle, but that's you can either fix that right now or you fix that in, the, in your 3D modeler. So I think we want to go and do something like that. So this sort of looking, looking forward is sort of here. For me, at least, I'm going to go and do this. So that's sort of 
sort of what I want. And now go and say set ground plane again, and then it goes and it's sort of recognized that. The next thing I want to do is set the reconstruction region because I want to go and crop this down so that it only focuses in on this one region there. So if I go and click that set reconstruction region, then I can go and drag these little points in from the outside. So maybe to here and to here. And I'm going to go and shrink it to here as well so that I'm going to crop out all the noise and leave in the pure gold, man. <laughs> so like that. I can even go and be quite generous and just start it, start it right here. I don't need to see the, the, the wooden block on which the statue originally was captured on. So take your time doing that. And the more accurate the program can infer what you want from it. So that is that. That's that. You don't need to click it again because otherwise it just opens it up again. So just leave it as that. And we're sort of ready to turn this into actual geometry. And that now happens on the mesh model tab. And uh, here we have three different options, uh, sort of resolution options, if you will, of how you want to turn this into an object. There's preview, this under create model here, there's preview, there's high detail, and there's also normal detail. So preview is something that happens really relatively fast. It's a good thing to try out and see what your object would look like. So it's a little blocky, but that's totally fine as well, because we're going to use the, the high res option in a moment. It doesn't have textures yet, but that's another step that we're going to tackle. So if you're happy, and I sort of, I am sort of happy, uh, this detail here at the back, I'm hoping that that's going to get resolved, but we'll see how it comes out. So normal detail is pretty good already. High detail makes you a little bit, gives you a little bit more resolution. I'm going to go and say normal detail here and let it render. So this takes a few couple minutes or something. And just for reference, I had about 74 images and on my dual Xeon system that took about 55 seconds to create the point cloud. So that wasn't very much. This is going to take a little bit longer, but we'll see what the total duration is at the end. There we go, not bad at all. It's under two minutes, so that was that was it. And it looks pretty cool already. I like it, I like it. So I think I might leave normal detail and see what that is like. So this one here that I showed you earlier, I might go get rid of the circles here. <laughs> uh, that was done with high detail and that gave me about 2.5 million triangles. So we'll see what the next one is gonna be here. So that is, your 3D model, and if that is all you want and that's all you need, then you can go and export it already. But we're not quite finished yet. Let's go and add the texture detail as well. So textures on anything photogrammetry, they're always gonna be just split up into little, small little pieces. And this is the same here, So, but that's, that's totally fine. It happens here under mesh color and texture. So all you need to do up here is hit texture, and then it'll go and colorize your model and also generate an 8K texture for it. There's also settings here under which you can set the size of it, but I think by default, it gives you that 8K texture, and that's exactly what we want. So this is, you know, defaults are pretty good for this. Hit texture, wait another couple of minutes, and then it takes all the color information and turns them into to something that makes your model even nicer. So notice that it only generates a base texture. It doesn't give you normal texture or roughness texture. That is all something that you have to do later if you want to. But base texture already makes a massive difference to the model's appearance. Also, if you had models that are just completely white and reflective, they might not come out. Like porcelain statues that are white and they reflect, that's that's a really bad thing to capture. So as matte as possible, I think, shine is okay, but if it's just very reflective, or glass texture, that sort of thing, that's not going to come out. You might, though, dip that into something like a matte water soluble paint and then scan it, something like a medium gray or something like a medium color tone. And there we go, that's that's that. So that looks very similar to what actually exists in Washington. So I really have, I feel like I'm receiving data here from another dimension. Look at that, so the normal detail, the, the I'm sorry, the uh, no, yeah, normal detail, not to be confused with normal map detail, the, the normal scan detail actually looks better than the high res one because we're cutting out a lot of noise there. So very, very impressive at the same texture size. So that is pretty cool. You can save your project itself, of course, here with this 
icon you can go and save as that saves the project here but to get your 3d model and the texture out of it you have to click on this here dense mesh model i, I don't know why but <laughs> why, is there, why is there no export option but yeah when you hover over it it says export mesh that's really what you want so dense mesh model to get the thing that you've just photogrammetrized out of it click on that pick a location so let me go and put that on here and i'll just call that one statue demo and obj so you can also go and save it as other formats obj works really well for me and it'll also save the texture with that uh, the file name cannot contain unicode characters and or spaces sorry i'm gonna say statue underscore demo now you know <laughs> and it gives you another summary before it goes and does it so we have an obj here we also export the textures with it so hit okay let it do its thing and then let's go crack open blender and have a look at it okay timeline closed and i've got the obj importer on a shortcut here i'll go and use statue demo obj 81 megabytes this is let's go and import that and see what it looks like ah okay so it's <laughs> it's on the wrong axis that's probably my obj export settings there that i could have probably fiddled with but uh, rx minus 90 is going to sort that right out for us so um something else to always be aware of is so but thanks to our alignment of the ground plane that is already pretty much in the center here you can of course go and oh i've got it's, it's the wrong I think it's the wrong way around so i also need to go <laughs> rz90 like so and now it's at the front now it's at the from the side here okay so some little bit adjustments there are, are probably necessary it is already pretty much where it needs to be on the ground uh, this here we can go and get rid of in a second let's just have a look at how tall it is yeah so it's 14 meters tall so before you export that just take a moment and make sure the the size is sort of appropriate for what the object was like so this is probably going to be more like 30 centimeter top statue probably smaller than that so i'm gonna say 0.1 and that makes it 1.4 meters so it's still like uh, s.1 that is now 14 centimeters so let's let's scale that up twice and of course that the um, origin point wasn't correct so gz so that that is here and while we're at it make this uh, set the origin to the 3d cursor and then we're we're good for that Control a to apply all transforms let's have a look what the size of this is under statistics so perfect we have got um, 650,000 triangles that isn't bad texture click on material preview here takes a second and here we go that's what it looks like woohoo so i'm chuffed about this because it's free photogrammetry with an epic tool another tool set from the epic suite that i'm already using every day so it's like i couldn't be happier about this and just to have a look at the topology here uh, that's not going to look amazing so it's going to be very dense if you look closely but it's very it's fairly uniform so you can go and remesh it now of course you can do some cleanup here i gotta say the normal detail i'm actually surprised about it looks much nicer than the high-res detail because there was a lot of noise in there and a lot of noise that i didn't really need so remesh or you can also go and retexture it if, of course if you want um the bottom straggly bits here let's go and cut those off so what i would do here is gz bring that down just a little bit like so and i'll go and hit alt z to go into ghost mode here and then go maybe into edge mode or no into, into actually into vertex mode and then go and just uh, do something like that cut that that whole bit off there from all sides i think that's going to be i can probably go and either scale that down into zero that's one option or you just go cut this off so either way uh, will work so you can go s0 then that'll go and do something like that that doesn't look fantastic but uh, the other option is if i undo that just go and x the vertices and then all these extraneous bits will go away and if you want to do you can go and still fill the statue um, from the bottom or you can go and remodel it and you know smooth this out with your with your favorite tools like you know have a go into brush mode and and uh, you know smooth this 
this back if there's a little bit too much noise you can you can do that but that's that really so yeah that is how reality capture works a super simple process it's a little daunting to get over the interface but hey once you've done it a couple of times you're going to be making anything that's 3d scannable <laughs> with no 3d scanner uh, whatsoever have fun exploring that if you have any questions if you have any suggestions of how this could be made better then please let me know in the comments i'm super chuffed about this it's like literally like receiving data from another dimension thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time take care bye bye